Hello grade 11s, in this video we're going to be looking at the dative covalent bond. You'll be asked about the dative covalent bond in almost every single chemistry exam so you need to know it. Subscribe for more videos like this and remember to watch to the end for all the teacher tips. Let's go. Before we get into a dative or a coordinate covalent bond, I just want to remind you about covalent bonds in general. So it says a covalent bond it is when we have the sharing of electrons between two non-metal atoms to form a molecule. So it's sharing. Electrons are being shared. And why do they do this? Because this helps my atoms reach noble gas structure. They want their outer orbitals to be full. And that creates a low potential energy molecule, which is a stable molecule. And we have learned that you can get a single covalent bond. We've learned that you can get a double covalent bond and a triple covalent bond. And we represent covalent bonding with Lewis dot diagram. So I have covered all of this stuff in previous videos. Check out the links in the description box below for those videos. But sometimes what happens is we can't form a single double or triple covalent bond, like a normal covalent bond. Sometimes a special covalent bond gets formed and this is called a coordinate or dative covalent bond. And it says here that this happens when one atom supplies both of the electrons for the bond. And I hope you can recall that in the previous types of bonding, so a single covalent, double or triple, both atoms have electrons which they share with each other. For example, in chlorine, Cl2, you can see here that this chlorine atom has this valence electron over here represented by a cross. It needs one more to reach a full octet structure, a stable structure, a noble gas structure, full outer energy levels. And this chlorine, molecule, this chlorine atom over here has the same thing. One atom over here that's kind of all alone, it needs one more. So this cross, this electron, and this dot over here, this electron, they get shared with each other. So it forms a single covalent bond over here. And remember that cross came from the first carbon atom and the dot came from the second carbon, sorry, not carbon, chlorine atom, but you know what I mean. So each chlorine atom contributes an electron or electrons which they share. And what makes a dative covalent bond different is that both electrons that are shared come from the same atom. So the other thing that's also doing the sharing isn't actually contributing any electrons. Let's take a look. So here's a repetition of what I just said. So it says a dative covalent bond forms um, when a pair of electrons is shared, but both of those electrons, so that pair, comes from the same atom. And we'll go over these two examples. These are the most common examples you can get in an exam. But very briefly, if you look at this over here, this is NH3, and you can see that there is a little pair of electrons that are existing as a lone pair. And both of those electrons come from the NH3, okay, from the same molecule. They, both of those electrons come from the nitrogen atom. And both of those electrons, that lone pair over there, get shared with the H plus ion, and we form a dative covalent bond. Can you see there that both of these electrons, there's the pair, two little purple dots, they both came from the nitrogen. The hydrogen had no electrons to share, but now there's a covalent bond that has been created. And generally, it is a H plus ion that they share with, and there is a very specific reason for this. You should know that a hydrogen ion, H plus, remember hydrogen, usually a normal hydrogen atom has one electron. How do I know that? Let's take a look at the periodic table. If you look for hydrogen on the periodic table, it's over here, there's hydrogen, and you can see over here that hydrogen has one electron. Remember the little numbers? The little numbers, that's the atomic number that represents the number of protons and electrons in a neutral atom. So the hydrogen atom has one electron, but the H plus ion, now remember an ion forms when we lose or gain an electron. And a positive ion, a cation, forms when we have lost an electron. Okay, think about it. Electrons are negative. If you lose something that is negative, you become positive. So we lose that electron. We only have one electron, but we lose that electron. We form the H plus ion. Plus means we've lost one electron. So the hydrogen atom has one electron. It's gone now. So now the hydrogen atom has no electrons. It has an empty valence shell. Nothing. Empty orbitals. Technically, if we have to draw the alpha diagram, which you learned about in grade 10, so I hope you remember that, it will just have an empty orbital. This is for the iron. Empty orbital. 
And if we had to draw it for the atom, then it would have one electron. Okay, but now it's an ion, it's lost that electron. It has nothing. So it has space for two electrons. Remember, if it gets those two electrons, it has a full orbital and it has reached noble gas structure. So at the moment, the hydrogen ion has nothing, no electrons, but it needs two electrons. And it shares those two electrons with something else. So the first example I will show you is the ammonium ion, and the ammonium ion forms from ammonia, which is NH3. So we start off with ammonia, then we add the hydrogen ion, and we get ammonium ion. Let me show you. So we start off with NH3. So if you have to draw the Lewis dot diagram for NH3, N has five valence electrons. Remember, you look at your periodic table over there. And you fill in the electrons like this one, two, three, four, and you start at the top again, five, and it's NH3. So there's three hydrogens, and each hydrogen has one valence electron, as we just discussed. So the one hydrogen will go there with its little electron, the one hydrogen will go there with its one electron, and the other hydrogen will go there with its one electron. Now, remember, each of these that I'm highlighting in yellow, that is a normal single covalent bond. There's one pair of electrons that's being shared and the hydrogen and the nitrogen each contribute to that little pair of shared electrons. However, now if you look at the ammonia, um, if you look at ammonia, it has this over here. Those are two electrons. It's a pair of electrons. We call it a lone pair. And it's just a lone pair. Now that pair can be made available and can be shared with the H plus ion, which remember is empty. So we draw in the H plus ion over here. Remember, it's empty. So both of those electrons are going to be shared with that ion. Then we draw an arrow, and this is basically what happens. This part of the molecule stays exactly the same. Nothing has changed here. We've still got the NH3 over there, but both of these electrons are going to get shared with this hydrogen. And overall, because this was an H plus ion, overall, this, this resultant molecule over here will have a positive charge. Now, it is important to draw the square brackets around the ion over here, because that's how we do it when we do these types of bonding. It indicates full orbitals now. And I, it is important to draw in that arrow. Do you see this arrow pointing towards the hydrogen? What that is showing is that both of these electrons, which come from the nitrogen, are being shared with that empty hydrogen ion, and overall, this thing has a positive charge. So all the little components in this diagram here, very, very important to draw. See if you can try for the hydronium ion, and if it's not obvious, I hope it is obvious, but the hydronium ion is formed from the water molecule, okay, the water molecule sharing that pair of um, electrons, so that lone pair, with the hydrogen ion. So see if you can pause the screen and try it. But if you can't, I'm going to be doing it with you. So H2O, oxygen goes in the middle. It has six valence electrons. Let's just take a look at the periodic table so that I can show you where I got the six from. Okay, I've highlighted it there in green. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So we do this by going one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then we have two hydrogens. One of the hydrogens will go there, the other one will go there. And remember, hydrogen each has one valence electron. So there and there. And I always just remind my grade 11s, it doesn't matter if your hydrogens go on the sides of the molecule like that, or if it's top bottom, or like minus, it does not matter. Okay, but what I hope you're noticing, just like in the previous example, is that this is a bonding pair of electrons. That's one pair, which means single bond over there. This is another pair, which means single bond over there. And we have two lone pairs of electrons. Now, one of these lone pairs, it's going to get shared with the H plus ion. So we say plus H plus, that pair is going to be shared with the H plus ion, draw an arrow, and we will ultimately have something that looks like this. That lone pair is still gonna stay there, not sharing with anything. Then we've got the hydrogen that it was initially bonded with, this hydrogen over here that it's still initially bonded with, and both of those electrons, both of these, are going to get shared with the hydrogen ion. Overall, it's going to have a positive charge. This is called the hydronium ion.
I hope that's made sense. If you want more chemistry videos, please check out the links in the description box below. I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.